Google just dropped Gemini 2.5 Pro. Cursor just released 0.48. I'm gonna do a very quick vibe check. We're gonna do a complete app build using Next.js to see how this model stands up against my current favorite, Claude 3.7. Bearing in mind that Cursor has not yet implemented and added this to the system. I'll show you how you can add it using Open Router. We're gonna build a Notion clone, which we're gonna call Commotion, and we're gonna use NeonDB in the background to get it up and running really quickly. And thank you so much to NeonDB for sponsoring this video. I'm gonna talk more about them later on. So Gemini 2.5 just dropped and it's looking pretty impressive. Google are really upping the stakes and showing that these models are really becoming commoditized. So instead of doing a big in-depth review of this from multiple different angles, I'm just going to talk about the things that matter most to me as somebody who likes to build web apps, mobile apps, etc., and agents with AI. So let's just take a quick look at the benchmarks here. So scoring really well on humanity's last exam, comparing to my current favorite model for software development, which is Claude 3.7 Sonnet. But if you look down here at the SWE bench, which is software engineering bench, it's a scoring a 63%, whereas Claude is up there at a 70%. It does perform better than Claude in some of the mathematics arenas and also in Ader's Polygot benchmark. LM Arena has it marked number one across multiple different benchmarks, including coding. So basically what we have here is a traditional large language model with chain of thought built in. So what that means is it actually takes the time to think through the answer to your question. This generally makes these kind of models a little bit slower than the traditional large language models, but I've actually seen very quick responses from Gemini 2.5 so far. Now, bear in mind, there's going to be rate limiting. A lot of people are testing this. So whatever you're getting back at the moment is probably not a true indication of the speed of the model. The next thing they're adding in is reinforcement learning. In reinforcement learning, if you know the outcome of a test and have the correct answer, you can use that to actually train the model to get better and better. So we're using the traditional reinforcement learning techniques on top of generative AI large language models. And that's why we're getting such high benchmarks across these disciplines like maths, science, and coding. But benchmarks are one thing. How does it actually feel to work with as a model? Let's jump straight in and build a application using Next.js, Cursor, and we're gonna use NeonDB in the background for a really fast way to get it set up and running really quickly. So if you wanna get access to this straight away, go to aistudio.google.com. So jump over here to the right hand side and you can select your model. So we've got Gemini 2.5 Pro Experimental, 0325. Google, the next model I suggest you develop is one that helps you with naming conventions for these releases. You have to give it to Google here. They're really fighting back in terms of the models they're pushing out. We've got amazing image generation, video generation through Veo, and now a whole improved new thinking model. This whole large language model revolution was kicked off by the Google Brain team back in 2017 with a paper they released around transformers. And OpenAI jumped in in the meantime and really kind of pushed it to the next degree. But Google are really coming back here with lots of great evolutions in their models. So I jumped onto Peter Level's bandwagon of trying to vibe code a web browser game in one shot. And I'm gonna show you what I got here. So my prompt was create a simple isometric helicopter game in 3GS where the helicopter shoots at towers. So I don't know who remembers Jungle Strike on the Sega Mega Drive back in the 90s, but I love this game, lost countless hours to it and wanted to see if I could re reproduce it. And it basically ran through this and outputted some code that I was able to then copy into cursor. And this is what I ended up with. So here I have my helicopter in isometric mode and I'm actually doing collision detection and hit detection and I can attack these buildings. And even as I move over and back, you can see the physics of my bullets are actually accurate. So I took the outputted code and dropped it into two different files in cursor. It gave me an index HTML in order to host and it imported 3JS and then it gave me a main JS file and then it gave me instructions on how to run it with a simple server. 
Because Gemini 2.5 Pro Experimental only came out yesterday, Cursor, of course, haven't had time to integrate it with their system. What Cursor does is do a lot of different handling, packaging, and context management in the background, and it does take a little bit of time to get that integrated with the model. I was able to plug it into the Ask mode, which isn't agentive, but it's just an easier way for me to connect with Google so that I can work with it within Cursor. It, you, it misses out on all the context management. We don't get the uh, agentive ability of it to apply all the changes. So I really don't recommend using this yet unless you're just testing it out for any kind of production work or if you want to move in any way fast. I recommend just go with the default model, Claude 3.7. This is purely just for me to test it out. With Cursor, you can decide to add in your own models. I rarely do this because I just go with the Cursor defaults and because that's what I'm paying for with Cursor. But if you want to add in custom models via OpenRouter, OpenRouter has a huge selections of models all aggregated together via one API. If you haven't used OpenRouter before, you can sign up for free. This is actually a free model, but you can also put in about $10 or something like that if you just want to try a couple of different models. So you just need to copy this directly and then add it into your cursor settings. You also go up here and get your API key directly from here. So we're going to paste in the model name here and then you just hit return. I've already got mine added in up here already. And then you want to paste in your API key here and verify it. But first, make sure that you've got the right uh, base URL there in place. And then when you've all that done, you should be able to select your model here in the drop down. So right here, I've got Gemini 2.5 Pro attached. And then remember, this won't work well in agent mode. It really just works in ask or edit mode. I had the best luck with ask. It also timed out a lot. So I'd have to do multiple requests in order to get it working. This is probably just because the model is getting a huge amount of interest. I put in a couple of prompts against Gemini and I have to say it worked really fast. It didn't give me any of the thinking loop that you would get from DeepSeek R1 or the high level thinking that you might get from O3 or O1. It just blasted it all out really quickly and I had zero issues with the code. There was no problems. It actually worked straight up. So this was a really simple test. It's not much to go on. Can't give you a good sense of how good this model is, but it's certainly very interesting. It's too early to tell because it's not fully hooked up to cursor in the way that I would like, but it is quite promising. What's really interesting to me is the context window of this new model. It is absolutely huge compared to some of the other models. And that really matters a lot when it comes into understanding your code base. But technically that means you can add in way more context and it will actually be able to sift through and take it into account as it builds. And that means more accurate builds and less issues potentially as we move forward. The big change that happened in Cursor 4.6 was that we now have the agent, the ask mode and the manual mode all in one drop down. So we can have one conversation and switch between each. But a lot of people didn't necessarily like this change. They like to have separate conversations. So you could actually create a new chat here and you could have all your chat conversations or your ask conversations in one tab and then you could have the implementation happen in the other. So if you're new to Cursor, sorry, I'm probably moving a bit fast. I've covered a lot of this in some of the other videos. I'd encourage you to go and check them out. But essentially, we do most of our work in agent mode. Agent mode is the implementation mode where it actually has a full view of your code base. It pulls everything into context and it knows what it should work on. But it can actually write and create folders and files at the same time. We switch into ask mode when we basically want to just think out the next steps of our project and figure out how something is working. So in my course, what I teach is that you start first to work in ask mode and plan out what you're going to build. We use product requirements documents to figure out what we're going to build first before we move forward. And then once we're happy, we switch from ask mode into agent mode where you will actually go and implement the code changes. And then you'll see also they've changed the 
edit mode now to manual mode. So that means when you're moving a little bit more slowly, you're not using agent mode and you want to actually check what each one of the changes are. And I encourage you to do that even when you're in agent mode, you need to understand the changes that are being made. This falls somewhere between what we call vibe coding, which is throwing everything out the window and just prompting your way to oblivion or Another area then is AI driven development or AIDD. Basically, that's the mode where you're actually using AI first to generate all the code, but you're stopping, taking time to make sure that it's implemented in the right way, it's secure, and that you're happy with how everything is laid out before you start to move forward to the next step. There's some, pr there's some improved support for MCP servers. I covered that in a video two back. Some of my favorite MCPs at the moment are browser tools. We've got sequential thinking. Uh, Neon Database have released their own MCP, which allows you to interact with your database just by prompting through your chat window. So to kick off the project, I went to file and then open folder and just opened a folder I'd already created on my desktop. And that was called commotion because what I'm making here is a notion clone. So essentially it was an empty folder and then down in the terminal, which you can open by just clicking here, new terminal, I typed in, I typed in NPX create next app. And that basically installed all these files here in the left hand side. That gives you the basis of a Next.js folder. In order to run that to see how it works, you can just type npm run dev and it will spin up and run a development version of the server. You should see a black page or a white page that says Next.js. So that's the basis of our application. The very next thing I did was I just typed in, I want to create a Notion clone. It's a note taking app with a left sidebar and main note taking area. Notes are listed in the sidebar. I can create a new note, edit it, and it will be auto saved in dark mode. And in this case, I added the code base by typing at hitting code base here. Usually you don't need to do this, but because we're in the ask mode, I needed to add the context. When you're in agent mode working normally, it will do this for you. So again, if you're a beginner, I don't recommend you use Google Gemini here. I would recommend just using Claude 3.7 for building out your applications until it's fully supported and added in. So it did a code base check and then very quickly, I have to say Gemini came back with this response. Now I didn't see any thinking added in here. Sometimes we'll get that in the 03, 01, or even the DeepSeek models. You get some high level thinking as to what's going on, but it jumped straight into the response. So it basically cleaned up the page then it went through adding in the sidebar components and a few other different elements. Now I had to apply these using the old fashioned way of just hitting apply as I went through instead of the agent doing that themselves. But that's fine. That's not a quirk of cursor or Gemini. It's just that the two aren't fully integrated yet. So the first shot prompt gave me actually a very good representation of, of Notion without even having any screenshots or reference to what Notion was. Um, but nothing exactly happened. So I added this second prompt very briefly. The interface is working, but nothing is happening. So my next prompt then was do a little bit of style changing. So change the color scheme in Tailwind. Let's make the background 950, makes the sidebar 800. I'm gonna use some components like Lucid React icons to add a little bit of professionalism. Let's make the sidebar collapsing and let's remove the blue focus border on the main window. And let's put a H1 title at the start of the main window. So I wanted to make it just look a little bit more like Notion. So in response to that prompt, it got me to install some dependencies. It got me to install debounce in the background. And then it, I had a pretty functioning app at that point. So right now we've only got local storage plugged in and I want to have persistent storage. So essentially if I shut down my app or I move to a different machine, local storage won't persist and I'm gonna lose all my notes. I want those per persisting somewhere stored in the cloud. So I could spin up my own local server or I could cloud host one really quickly. And in order to get this video out, I wanted to move as fast as I possibly could. And that's why I'm using Neon, they're the sponsor of today's video. So I'm gonna show you really quickly how I set up that database and connected it using Gemini Pro 2.5 and Cursor. It basically just spins up and spins down as it is needed. And that's really good for a lot of our startup and hobby projects. And we can actually have multiple ones of these running, spin them up and spin them out and not have them on a long running basis. 
The next thing is branching. So as you're working on your app, you're probably going to have a development, maybe a staging and a production version of that. So what Neon offers is the ability to have branched versions of your database in the same way that we work in branching in GitHub. And that's really powerful and it helps for being able to move a whole lot faster as you iterate. And it's really simple to get started. You just go and click a new project and we're going to type in the name commotion one you pick your postgres version you can leave the database name as is you get to pick your deployment location and look at this really sweet little interface we have here good design matters a lot to me and neon have kind of nailed that and so we click create with just a few in just a few seconds we've got a new project ready to go and then we've got all these options here like connecting your database importing your data I've got a brand new MCP server, so you can actually talk to your database via MCP and cursor. I covered MCP just about two videos back if you want more info on that. So up here, we just click connect. And then pretty much straight away, we're given a nice little connection string here. And we can just click copy snippet here. And that's pretty much it. It's not any more complicated than that. So next up, I just created a .env file. So that's where you store your secret credentials. You wanna make sure this is kept secret and safe and that it's included in your .git ignore so it doesn't get pushed up to the cloud. And I just pasted in my database URL and the full URL that I got from NeonDB. So my four prompt to Gemini was, I've added connection details for a Postgres database in the .env. Let's switch from local storage to using this database. And this was pretty much my entire prompt. I'm pretty impressed with what Gemini 2.5 did next. It took this one prompt. I've added connection details for a Postgres database in the .env. Let's switch from local storage to using this database. And with this one prompt, it managed to figure out, okay, let's install Prisma. Now, I don't know where it decided to pull Prisma from. I actually like to use Prisma. I've used it in the past in other projects. I'm unsure if this is being pulled from some kind of context that Cursor has set up previously, or this was just a natural choice for the model to use because it does integrate well with Neon itself. But it made this decision on itself. And I've had a lot of problem in the past trying to set this up. So I was impressed at how it did this all in one shot. So it basically got me to run this command to install Prisma, then it initialized it, it went and configured the database URL in the .env that I had created. And then it started to define an entire schema for this in the database, which you will find in Prisma and then schema. So it defined its own little database schema. Now it is one table, it's fairly basic, but I still think this is impressive. Um, it went and it ran the migration so that all this information would be pushed to our Neon database and it created then a client instance and got me to run that so that everything would be carried forward. Then it went and created a new server action for the database operations. It refactored the page to use these server actions, updated the sidebar. All this is in one prompt. It updated the editor, it updated the types, and then gave me the steps that it needed to actually go and restart. So this is the kind of quality and information that I would expect from Claude 3.7, but it's coming from a Google model. Um, so this is really quite impressive. So essentially in that one shot, it worked straight away. So if I go over to NeonDB, I can see it set up a Prisma migrations table and a notes table with all the notes that I have added in as a test. And it did this all in one shot. So let's go ahead and run this. So npm run dev and apologies. I haven't gone step by step on this build like I usually would in some of my other videos because I just wanted to use this as a chance to do a vibe test and move as quickly as possible. But the next time round, when it does get fully integrated, I'll do a complete app build from start to finish. So make sure you like and subscribe if you wanna see more of those kind of videos. So back over here, I'm gonna hit npm run dev to run our development server. And then you'll see that it's running here on localhost 3000. And so here we have our Notion clone created in just about 15 minutes using Neon DB, Cursor 0.48 and Gemini Pro 2.5. I can type in my title here and then you'll see it saves over here in the left hand side as a title note. 
So I typed in my note here, I changed the title. If you're interested in building apps and agents with AI, check out switchdimension.com for my course and community. And thanks again to NeonDB for sponsoring today's video. And I didn't even have to click save here. It has actually set up debounce and it's set up auto save. We have the new row with the title, uh, the content, the created date, etc. So that's pretty awesome for just 15 minutes of work. What could you do in a couple of hours, a couple of days or a couple of months?